the most common problem that you'll get probably especially if you're using older uh, wire that's had some use um, you're going to get sticking in your tip it's going to stick in your tip and give you an erratic bead and bad burn back which is where the wire burns up to the tip you want to make sure it doesn't do that um, so what you want to do to prevent those problems it'll well what it does is it'll stick when <clears throat> it'll stick when you go to pull the trigger and apply power but if you just feed it it'll feed perfect but it'll only stick when you go to weld which is really frustrating if it happens to you and that is caused by dirty wire especially from grinding dust you don't want grinding dust on your wire it'll make it stick in the tip and it's hard to remove from your wire storing the wire is more the most important thing to prevent your wire from getting dirty and corroded you want to store it in a plastic bag or put a, at very least put a plastic bag over your wire if it's not covered inside of your welder such as on this feeder here or and you also want to if you have some silica gel put it in the bag and seal it if it's not sealed the silica gel isn't going to do any good so just um, make sure that no dust and especially not grinding dust gets on your wire now if your if your liner is old and it's been used for a while that can get dust and dirt in it too that's the part that goes inside of your cable and in your neck some of the guns have a, a neck liner and if that gets dirty it can pick up the dirt there and do the same thing so you either want to take a, a blow gun some compressed air and blow it out uh, or if it keeps sticking and giving you trouble and you're sure your wire is clean when it's on the roll and it's picking up the dirt from the liner you want to replace your liner it's fairly cheap and should solve all of your problems unless it's the wire itself now basically um, some of the other problems you can run into is with your voltage and your current the thing about MIG welders is more than any other process your uh, results are going to depend very much on the settings of your machine. You want to make sure it's dialed in for your thickness of your metal and for your, your um, diameter of your wire. Um, basically for this what I have here is uh, 045 wire it's uh, ESAB dual shield or double shield which means that it needs shielding gas even though it has a flux core that's the only wire you need shielding gas if it's flux core most flux core is gasless otherwise you're going to get pinholes in your weld um, but most people don't use the double shield but if you do run into the double shield just remember you need shielding gas if you're running uh, if you're running solid wire you definitely need shielding gas but most flux core you're going to run into is going to be gasless except the ESAB double shield okay so where was I
Oh, dialing in your your voltage and your feed speed. Your your voltage and your feed speed have to be set by what thickness of your metal that you have that you're trying to weld. More feed speed and more voltage go together. If you increase the feed speed, you have to increase your voltage. If you lower your feed speed, you have to lower your voltage. And what you listen for is sort of a, a higher pitched buzzing sound that comes from the weld. It should have a really even pitch to the buzzing sound. And then you know that your your feed speed and your um, and your your voltage are both set right. Now some welders to set that you have voltages in steps which means that you have like one two three four five on your knob and you turn it and it clicks into position now on those like the Hobart welders the Hobart MIG welders to set those what you gotta do is you gotta take your um, your voltage get your voltage dialed in and then set your wire speed because the wire speed is a fine control so you can set it to any wire speed you need to a point uh, and uh, so you with those you set your voltage first and then adjust your feed speed until you get the buzzing sound then with other units such as this one I just do what they recommend but you could really do it either way adjusting your wire feed speed by your voltage or you could adjust your voltage by your feed speed in other words you could set the voltage first and then start welding and turn your knob until it sounds like a buzzing sound or you could set your current your feed speed first and then start welding and turn your voltage knob until it um, it gets the right sound but basically um, basically you could do either way or I just do what they recommend in the manual for this unit because when you start welding the voltage will change it'll automatically adjust your voltage and your current so what I do is I set my feed speed and then I do a practice bead and look listen for that buzzing sound and then I adjust my voltage until I get that nice buzzing sound now if you get too much voltage you get what's called burn back where your wire burns up to your tip and that's when you know you have too much voltage at, at a certain wire feed speed and you want to cut your voltage back when you get that burn back 